Hello, um, this is the uh, part two of the tutorial, how to analyze dynamic PET um, CT images using the MIT software, which is available free to use. If you didn't see the part one, so please uh, do this before watching this part, because I will use the knowledge which was described um, and technique which were described in the part one of the tutorial. So um, for this analysis, we'll use the MI software, which is available free. You can download it from the mi.sourceforge.net. Um, it is a software which was developed by the graduate student uh, several years ago at Stanford University. And um, unfortunately, it's no longer um, developed, but it's still um, being used for quick and, um, and, and uh, easy um, analysis um, of different modality images. Um, you can install it using the Linux or on Macintosh um, OS or Windows. I will be using the Windows version of the software. I already installed it. So let me just open the file. Um, this is one of the files that it's being used for the homework. Um, it's a dynamic data set of the nanoparticles um, injected to the mouse um, for the duration of 60 minutes. So we'll reconstruct the images um, every minute. So we have a 60 images um, at one uh, minute interval. So let me open up, uh, double click, and uh, the MIT software opens up the data set. So from the part one of the tutorial, so you know that this is actually where you see um, uh, your data set. So one is the CT uh, marked um, over here. So we can see the CT data set on the transverse coronal and sagittal cats as well as the PET uh, data set, which uh, shows actually those colors. So we can switch on or turn on and turn off different data sets. So for example, right now I turn off the CT data set, so we see only the PET, um, or I can leave the CT and uh, switch off the uh, uh, PET data set just to see the anatomical structures. So what we'll be doing today, so this is the um, analysis of the uh, dynamic data set. So let me first um, zoom in, so we can just zoom in a little bit um, our um, uh, our window. And um, so this is a zoom which which you can definitely change um, up and down, um, you know, per your liking. Um, but I mentioned to you that um, we have actually the dynamic data set. So um, this is the data set, the pet data set, which um, contains sixty frames, one minute each. Um, right now we see just only one frame. Um, so where we can see actually different frames? Well, you can see over here, so this is the um, uh, information on the on the tab here. It's the data time. So when we click this over here, so it shows uh, two data sets. So one is the CT, which shows um, just the information or image information about uh, the CT data set, but we are interested in the PET. Right now, as you can see, it selected the first frame or frame zero from the time zero, so from the start of the injection up to 60 seconds after injection. And then the next one, and we can click the next one, it will start from 60 to 120, then from 120 to 180 seconds as a frame two. And we can just do this up to frame number 59. So this will be a total of 60 frames because it's a frame 59, but as well, we started from the beginning of the frame zero. Um, be, uh, up to um, one hour. So as you can see, when we click at different frames, so our um, um, our PET image over here, it changes, right? So we can see uh, the changes in the by distribution of the radio tracer. So when we go back from the uh, frame one, which is the at the time of the injection or during the injection, so most of the radio tracer will go to the heart. So we can see over here the heart. Um, and there is some um, ratty tracer going through the vessels towards the rest of the body. Um, from the part um, one of the tutorial, you also know that we can change the cuts, um, you know, going through different cuts of the of the animal, which can um, also provide you some information about, you know, where we are, um, uh, where the different anatomical structures are. So, for example, here we can see that the radio tracer at uh, the first minute it's already going through the kidney filtration. So this, these are the kidneys over here, and uh, which results that uh, at the later frames, we should see um, accumulation of the radio tracer within the bladder, which will be probably located somewhere here. 
So we can go down and actually select, let's say, a frame um, like a 15 minutes after injection. So um, the frame number 30. So now we can see that it's a very high activity in the kidneys. There is a little bit in the in the um, um, in the um, liver. So this is a liver. Um, let's see the heart. So the heart, you can see that it's already very small uh, activity in the heart, but we see a very high activity in the bladder. So this is a bladder. So most of the radio tracer, which was injected um, about 30 minutes later, it ended up in the, in the bladder and there is some accumulation in the liver as well as in the kidneys. All right, so how we can analyze actually um, or uh, graph uh, different tissue activity curves um, so part of your homework, it will be actually to, uh, to, to um, uh, graph the blood activity curves and, and calculate some parameters which are described in the homework. Um, and if you are trying to look at the blood activity, well, I would, um, you know, definitely you can select several of the um, organs, um, either heart, because the heart will be pumping the, the blood, so um, any activity which will be found in the heart over here, it will be uh, reflecting the, the activity in the blood. The another one, you can also look at the lungs, which are these parts over here. And finally, you can also kind of um, look, especially during the first few minutes. So let me change actually over here to the second um, frame. Uh, you can also see that there are some vessels. So over here, this is a very high activity vessel which pumps the blood to the rest of the um, 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 of the body. So this is most probably the abdominal aorta. And selecting region of interest or drawing region of interest on any of those three organs which I mentioned, so either the abdominal aorta, the heart, or the lung, we should, should give you the information about the blood clearance or how quickly the radio tracer uh, is being cleared from the blood. But um, I will, of course, not provide you the solution to the homework, but I would like to show you how, for example, perform the, um, the analysis of what's going on in the kidneys, right? So let's start from the, from the um, time zero um, so we can see, um, start seeing actually those kidneys. So let me just close the window. So right now we are again looking at the first minute of the, um, of the acquisition during the PET where we have nicely um, um, selected or, or visualized uh, kidneys. We can use this tool um, to um, kind of point out or, or point at the kidney, for example, like this. So now we are selecting the left kidney um, of, the, of the animal. Um, and we can uh, define the region of interest, which will encapsulate some of the kidney tissue. So how we do this? Well, we, um, as you can see, um, when I'm um, uh, hovering over those data sets, let's say I'm hovering right now on um, over the DPET data set. So at the bottom, we can see uh, different options. So for example, M1 is select data set. So this is by selecting data set uh, by clicking the, uh, the left mouse uh, button. Um, making active is the middle mouse button. So that's what I will do right now. Apparently it doesn't work um, on my mouse. But uh, the last one is um, the Shift M3. So this is to, uh, with the button Shift on your keyboard and the button on the mouse, the right mouse button, you can add region of interest. So just hovering over the D-pad, so I can do this, and then um, it will pop up the window uh, with the different options. So we can add the elliptical uh, region of interest or elliptical cylinder. I would select actually elliptical cylinder because it's a it's a 3D uh, region of interest in the form of the cylinder. So let me just select that. And now I can call it, um, name um, the region of interest. Let me just call it um, kidney because that's what I will be selecting. Click OK. And now we can see that, uh, well, first we got some triangle over here. When we click this, it will show that we have a region of interest defined, but well, yet not yet defined completely. Um, we need to point actually where this region of interest will be. 
you can see that the mouse cursor actually changed to the right pointing arrow so we can click in the middle of the um, of the kidney image um, using the transverse um, cut so this will define where we start the cylinder and it will ask me also to pick the depth um, in the uh, in the millimeters of this region of interest well this is a mouse so most probably the kidney will be less than one centimeter so less than 10 millimeters but um, let's actually select 10 millimeters at this point click ok so now we defined actually the depth of the region of interest um, going starting from this going down uh, or or in the depth of the 10 uh, millimeters but we don't see an region of interest here on the image why is that well if you click if you do right click on the uh, region of interest it will open another window where you can see the dimensions of the region of interest uh, called kidney. You can see that we defined the Z direction, which is the depth to 10 millimeters, but we didn't specify the X and Y. So let's do this actually. So let me select uh, 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter and the depth will leave at the 10 millimeters. So this will be kind of like a cylinder um, uh, with a size 10 by 10 by 10 millimeter click close and now you can see that actually the region of interest appeared on the uh, close to the kidney it almost encapsulate the whole kidney it's not important to encapsulate the whole kidney for this exercise we just need to make sure that the region of interest will be within the kidney um, uh, organ and we can see that most of our uh, uh, or, or some of the region of interest it's outside of the kidney uh, it's very clear to see that the, uh, the size of the region of interest, it's too large. So we need to change that. Well, let's change it. So right click on the kidney, uh, go to dimensions and probably I will just reduce. Well, let's look at this, uh, maybe about to five millimeters. This one will go to five millimeters. So now we can see that we significantly reduced the region of interest and it's kind of in with the, it's within the, the kidney and probably the depth of the length of the cylinder is too big as well let me change this to five as well so now we have small uh, cylinder five by five by five i would probably uh, because it's still touching the areas outside of the kidney so most probably i would just reduce one more time I would do maybe three millimeters by three millimeters by five and this will be perfect so right now we can also click and move this region of interest just to make sure that we are within the kidney tissue on both of those all, all those three cuts transverse coronal and sagittal planes so we can see the region of interest is within the kidney all right so what we can do right now with the kidney well we can calculate what's the activity of the kidney in the kidney um, uh, uh, versus time right because we have those 60 uh, 60 frames and we can change actually to for example the second uh, frame the third frame and so on so you can see that the regions of interest are still being present here so they are still defined but they will, of course, um, uh, 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 show a different activity. But let's do the analysis, actually, of those. So how we do this? Well, we go to the tools and uh, we select the Calculate ROI statistics. When we um, click on those, um, this, um, this menu option, um, we can leave the selected uh, regions of interest on selected data sets or we can just select all regions of interest if you have multiple of those regions of interest or all data sets so this will be probably a safe choice then we'll calculate over all voxels that's fine so we'll just calculate all the voxels and i would prefer to uh, click the more accurate quantification which will be a little bit slower but again with with novel computers it will be almost immediate analysis so when we execute so now within, you see, within the second or so, I'm, I'm not using a very powerful computer here, but within um, uh, some time, you will get the table with the calculations. So how we can read that? Well, first, on the first column, we see the data set, and uh, we are interested actually in the PET, not the CT. Uh, the second 
column is the frame so this is something which we are interested in because this will tell us about the minute um, after injection so the frame zero it will be at the time of injection so zero minute after injection frame one it will be one minute after injection two minutes and so on until we'll go to 59 minutes after injection um, then what um, it's important for us is the mean value. So this is a mean value for the counts, which are within the region of interest. Um, there is also standard deviation, but you know this is probably not a very important uh, right now. We will be just focusing on the mean value. But of course, if you would like to graph your uh, uh, blood activity curve and, and use the error bars, you can do this by uh, using the standard deviation. Uh, this is also min max values and the size of the region of interest should be the same for for all uh, time points because we didn't change the region of interest size so um, what we can do with this well the best idea it will be either we can save as a comma separated values uh, so we can import this to excel or you know save it save it for a further analysis or what i do i will just copy the whole table so this will go to the clipboard and now I can open any you know, worksheet or the program. You can import the, those values to the program that you need for the analysis. Um, I will show you um, in the Excel. So let me just open up the um, Excel window here. And just uh, with a right click, I'm going to paste uh, the information here. So as you can see, um, and let me actually um, change the size of the columns. So now we can see the name of the ROI. So this is the kidney. If you have multiple of those uh, ROIs, so they will be populated here as well. Uh, we have a data set, so we are not interested in the CT. So let me just delete this from the very beginning. So I'm, I selected this, uh, this uh, row, right click and then delete. So I will just working only with the uh, DPET or dynamic PET data sets. So this is the frame uh, number and then uh, or the number of minutes after injection and the mean value and really what we need to plot right now is the uh, uh, mean value versus frame so let's do this so let me just select first the frame so let me just go with the shift click select that and then with the control i think with the control i can select the second set Oops. and go to here I think just need to be selected one more time. So let me just do the frame with the shift, then with the control select this one, and with the shift to select the whole thing. Here we go. So now we have selected two columns, uh, frame and the mean value, and now we can just insert a chart, and in this case it will be scatter, so X versus Y. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, with a connected uh, uh, data points. So now what we have over here, so this will be our time versus so the time on the x axis and the activity uh, on the y axis. So now you can observe actually over the time how the activity changed uh, during the imaging. So immediately after injection of the radio tracer, within several, probably two, three minutes, there was increase in activity in the kidney because the tracer was filtered by the kidney. Then the urine production started, and then it was a dumping, dumping of the urine to the uh, bladder. So that's why the activity in the kidney went down. And then it was a continuous accumulation of the radio tracers of filtration in the kidney, reaching the peak at about half an hour or so, and then slowly going down. So, of course, if you will be analyzing the blood, uh, blood pool, so using either the region of interest which will be placed on the heart, on the lung, or on the vessel, so, um, of course, the shape it will be completely different because in the blood it will be very high activity early on, and then it will go gradually down with the exponential decay um, going down to reach almost zero at 60 minutes. So now your plan or your job, it will be to calculate based on this graph, calculate what is the time when the activity reaches 50% in the blood. Okay, so this is the parameter which we often, uh, which we often report uh, during the analysis. So um, 
that's everything actually how you can um, analyze the um, the uh, dynamic data sets so using uh, a table that will provide you the information about the time after injection um, and also the uh, value of the activity so the the mean value is one of the um, of the activities that you can use for the analysis um, you can also select several or define several regions of interest and compare for example how the uh, the the um, activity changes in kidney you can also look at uh, let me just switch off this um, and also the pet uh, just to give you a better illustration so this is the heart again uh, the lungs will be just behind the heart so this is this kind of black uh, spots on the CT image because you know lungs are filled with the air so that's why they will not show too much contrast then just below the heart uh, so this part it will be liver so you can look at the activity in the liver um, this is a bladder so this is the bladder which will be filled with the radioactive material uh, uh, very quickly um, after um, uh, after uh, injection and then I can also recognize here so these are kidneys uh, which, um, of course, if you switch on the PET data uh, set, so you can see that they are filled with the radioactive material. Um, so that concludes the, uh, the tutorial how to perform the analysis of the dynamic data sets. Um, of course, for your homework, you will need to select different region of interest, not the kidney, but um, the region of interest which will, uh, which will uh, uh, show the activity of the blood. So again, this could be either the heart, lung, or the vessel.